still early. China as a society, in isolation and in closed door, one people developed from some hundred years, thousand years BC up to now, up to 1840. So the mentality and mindset for Chinese people, there's no, there's no the rest of the world. The whole world is China. So it's not like here. I think uh, here people enjoyed, uh, from very beginning, you enjoyed uh, these exchanges and uh, communications with all countries around. So people are very used to to talk, to speak, to communicate with those with different color, different uh, languages of those people. So when at the start, when we saw those British and uh, those uh, Europeans, people gave them their some very bad names. They gave them, they said that this is uh, some ghosts. This, they call them white ghosts. So this is a very close society. So social, I think, in two sense. One, we have to make tremendous efforts to change the mentality of Chinese people, to tell them, to make us feel, this is a different world. This is a globe. And we should have more exchanges with the rest of the world. We should learn from them. At the same time, we should have an uh, open society. Another one is China, ever since our Ming Dynasty, that is uh, about uh, uh, for 15, 15 to 60 century, up until 1949, <coughs> three to four thousand, four hundred years, compared with other parts of the world, other continents, China fell from the top of the world as a pro prosperous and uh, powerful nation into a really a backward and poor people. From beginning, I think, in 1978, for example, our per capita income, or GDP, is only 200 US dollars per capita per year by the year of 1978. So you can imagine what a continent is that. So all our modernization drive, one generation after another, is to make China rejuvenized and coming back to become a unified and a prosperous country to the benefits of our people, to make them, to give them a decent and good life. While our reform and the opening up, focusing of our economy and our, we call it development, we put a lot of efforts on raising this, the raising, what we said, raising tide of our economy. <coughs> and uh, when we really have some in development, we also watch very closely whether there is a gap between poor and the rich. And like here, everywhere, uh, uh, we are very guard against those uh, corruptions and, and, and social disease because of this economic development. So now, we put a lot of efforts, simply put, to improve the lives of common people. We have a lot of uh, social engineering projects, like uh, to build more schools in countryside, to give more support for our farmers. It is billions of dollars, or tens of billions of dollars, to set up our uh, social safety net, to improve our hospitals. This all put in our recent new, what we call, 10 year strategy and a five year plan. <coughs> so this is the where I emphasize in my presentation, 
that we put a lot of resources to the social aspect in the, in the domestic sense. Isolation and hegemony is also uh, uh, frequently happen, uh, frequently coming out of topic. We said this in comparison with what in here outside world people used to uh, what we had in some continent we have this uh, like in 18, 19 century power politics in Europe in 20th century, the hegemony rivalry between two powers like the Soviet Union and the United States. You see, China are thinking whether we can avoid others. When you have a rising power, of, uh, or you have a status quo power, or you have a, uh, what we call the, in the Oxford, uh, like uh, the uh, revolutionary power want to derail the status quo power. All this theory and doctrine of international, poli international political science gave us an impression that whenever you have a rising power, there will be some problem. And if you read some other papers, like uh, what uh, Dr. Gasolek mentioned, uh, Mr. Z, Mr. X, and, uh, in the 1950s, or that is still early, or that, uh, Mr. Y in, 19, in 21st century, and will be Mr. Z uh, in, in the coming year, I guess. Some, something doctrine there still 